Back here with Antoine Walker. We are talking about his former squad, the Celtics. They were looking to snap their three-game losing streak, and that mission was not accomplished, Antoine. They played well, but not well enough to beat the Portland Trailblazers. Damian Lillard putting up 33. Portland beating up on Boston 97-92. Celtics have now lost four in a row. They've now lost six of their last eight, and they have now lost ground in the East, falling deeper down into that fifth spot. But Kyrie, still a little optimistic. Take a listen. One, two is pretty much locked up. One, two, three. So, uh, you know, just play to, as long as we get there. Uh, I mean, I, I can't wait for this. All this other BS about regular season and keep getting better and talking over and over and over and again about what we can do to keep getting better in the regular season. I just want to be at the highest level playing. I mean, that's what I'm here for. What's your confidence level? That's what, going for. what do you mean? Just in terms of, like, you know, you got a question. question is that? <laughs> a, a legitimate question. I mean, I just, you know. No. How do you feel about this team? Right, next question. <laughs> All right, Antoine, put put this in perspective a little bit. How much trouble are the Celtics actually in? They played a little bit better, but they're, they're still losing games. They're, they're in a lot of trouble because now they're probably not going to be able to get in the top three spots um, mm -hmm. with the way they're playing basketball. They're going to probably be in the four or five spot, which makes for a tough matchup, regardless if it's Philly or, or if it's Indiana. Indiana. It makes for a tough matchup. So you're looking at possibly getting eliminated in the first round, which will be a disaster. Disaster. <laughs> and now you're really going. Now you're talking about a, a, probably a whole different team next year for the Celtics if that ends up happening. I think last night, if you watched that game last night, you can see where the problem lies at. One on the defensive end, in the pick and roll, they were not communicating. It was constantly mm -hmm. arguing and fights when they were playing against a Dame Lillard and C.J. McCullough, two guys that are going to put a lot of pressure on you. They just, the communication part, that comes from lack of leadership, guys not getting along. You can see that. Then offensively, I hate to p point the finger at him, but Gordon Haywood plays 27 minutes, gives you three points. I mean, he's got to be better than that. That's, that's one guy that they're going to need to step up, and he's not, he's not it delivering. It, 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 I don't blame Gordon Hayward. I blame the coach for playing him 27 minutes. The... the, the the, the time is up on Gordon Hayward being your sixth man, being a prominent part of your rotation. When one of the other problems with the Celtics in my eyes is Jalen Brown wants more minutes. Jason Tatum wants more opportunities. I know people say Jason Tatum's won the same amount of minutes this year as last year. Well, yeah, but he wants to be playing more minutes than he did last year. He's in year two. He's not a rookie anymore. Gordon Hayward, he, he has not recovered physically and mentally from his injury. They've got to win games. This is, to me, one of the rare spots where, even though he's a max contract guy, you don't have to give him DNP coach's decision. But he can be down in the 12 to 14 minute a night range. I think it would make the team better. I had a problem, because I've coached a lot of kids. And, and you get attached to kids when you come into their lives early. So for me, what I'm going to watch for, and I can understand what you're saying as far as Gordon, Gordon Hayward. It's tough for him because he's healthy and to say, you know, coach, take me out of the lineup. He's got a bunch of pride, and he realized, just like Paul George, the more minutes I stay out there, eventually I'm going to get my confidence back if he's going to win. But his confidence is not going to come back by not playing in NBA games. But the biggest problem is the relationship between Brad Stevens, him recruiting Gordon Hayward, and knowing him as a kid. I had this. I coached Giovanni Bernard, great running back, Cincinnati Bengals. Coached him as a kid, Little League. He ended up going to the same high school that I was going to be coaching at. Obvious. That's the way things go. <laughs> yeah. The kids travel with the coaches. Gio got hurt in his senior year. We kept trying to rush him back. We were trying to fight for a national championship. I had another running back. He wasn't too bad. Name's James White. Gio was a better runner. James is a better all-round player coming out of the backfield. We tried to force Gio back. We need Gio back, Gio back. We should have been going with James White. And when you have relationships with kids, it's hard to give up on them. I know the optics don't say it. I know the stat sheet says he didn't. But when I've been involved with a person, that was part of Gordon coming there. Right. So now I'm at the worst part of my career. Y'all getting ready to give up on me? Now, it might be the right thing. But this, this one type, what we miss a lot in sports is, man, they're human. The human element. Mm -hmm. And that human element is the reason why Gordon is going out there struggling, trying to play, trying to recapture. He's got a lot of pride. But what gets in the way, when you have those existing relationships that, Man, can I really judge him as a basketball player right now? Is it better for him to sit and then potentially come back to start of next season? Those are tough questions. Yeah, I got in the Boston. same type of story. I played for Rick Patino, obviously, in college. After my first year in the league, he comes and coaches the Boston Celtics. He coaches for two and a half years. 
He paid me my big contract. I would make the all-star team the second year with him in 98. And then things went downhill because he wanted to win right away. The roster was a changeover. Kind of pointing the finger. I was the man. We grew after Paul in 99. Mm -hmm. But I had to get away from Coach P. And obviously he left or I was going to have to leave because we were not getting along. Our relationship had been tarnished um, because he wanted to win. And a lot of the pressure was on me. I'm 20, 21 years old. And he forced me, he forced a hand where he could not take it. And he ended up leaving mm -hmm. and I ended up staying. But it was one of those situations where he had me. He was a father figure mm -hmm. for me in college. He wanted the best for me. He paid me my contract. Right. He took care of me as a player. But then it did not work on the court. It did not work when he was um, when he was the head coach of the Celtics. And one of those problems become, man, he coached you when you were a kid. Man, I got my own money. I'm grown now. Like, you can't talk to me that way anymore. So it becomes, man, at Gordon, does the coach actually know what is best for him right now? Because this is the least athletic he's been his whole career. Uh, and the least confident he's a ever been on a basketball court. He was more confident on a basketball court, I guarantee you, when he was 10 years old. The best player out there busting heads. Man, didn't he almost hit a three to win a national championship? Uh, uh, half quarter almost. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Can't they just reduce his minutes? Well, do they have that, to take no, him out No, that's completely? what I think. That's what I think they need to do. But I also want to spread this around a little bit. I've been hearing for all season long, the reason Anthony Davis didn't get traded is because, well, if you can get Jason Tatum, you have to wait to get Jason Tatum. I've been hearing that he's going to win a scoring title in this league, that he's going to be an all-NBA forward in this league. Jason Tatum needs to play better than Jason, Kyrie is doing his part. I know they haven't won with Kyrie as much as they won without him. It makes no sense. I get it. Mm -hmm. But Jason Tatum is having a fine season. He's gone from last year 14 points a game to this year 16 mm -hmm. points a game, slightly less efficient. Right. He's not a playmaker. He's never averaged two assists per game in his two-year career. He's a 1.3 to 1.8. Jason Tatum, in his 31 minutes a night, needs to be more efficient or needs to get more minutes and more opportunities. Because if the Celtics aren't going to have anything close to all-star production from, Al from uh, Gordon Hayward, and we know what Al Horford's going to give you, and Horford continues to be underrated, mm -hmm. they need Tatum close to 20 a night. He's got a lot of these nights, 6 of 11, 14 points. That's what he was last night. He's had a lot of those this year. Jalen Brown, I don't think it's fair to ask him to be a high-level scorer. We know Tatum, we think we know Tatum can do it. He needs to play better as well. Well, you got to think about this, too. You got to put a little more blame on, on Kyrie. He takes 24 shots last night. You got to maybe defer a little bit to get these guys involved. Kyrie's not a guy that's going to get you 10, 12 assists a game. You, you know, mm -hmm. that's not his makeup. That's not how he plays. Jason Tatum's a guy that needs ISO situations, needs the ball, where he can get his, get his opportunities to go one-on-one. -on -one. Last year, he got that once Kyrie was gone. You could feature him in the game. That's why he was able to get big numbers. That's why people mm -hmm. started talking about scoring titles and the way he could score the basketball, because he was getting the ball. He was kind of like a Camelo you know, type of player. Mm. Like, kind of like a ball, you know, get it to him. He can make his own move, make his own play. Jalen Brown's another guy who can create for himself. So guys that play with scoring point guards yeah. usually struggle in those type of situations. Mm. All right, Antoine, stick around. Got to take a quick break. Coming off, does LeBron have enough left in the tank to make the playoffs? That's next on First Things First. <laughs> That's funny. You sitting here.